I'm using a new microphone, so I'm hoping that the audio is going to be super crisp. Hello friends. I've forgotten how to do chatty videos because I haven't done a sit down on my bed video in a long time. But uh, today I wanted to break that trend and do a Theatreathon TBR. Theatreathon is a new readathon that Catherine Lyle, who I adore, has started with her friend Emma, a huge book nerd. Basically, I think the aim of the game is for people to get more people reading more plays because in the book community I guess we're quite kind of fixated on our genres and um, plays sometimes get left by the wayside but I am also a part of a community theatre group so I perform in plays regularly so this is right on my street. I see a lot of shows as well whenever I can locally and further afield. Um, so yeah, this is my jam. So. And also I wanted to support them because I love Catherine's videos and um, yeah, I'm just a big fan. So without further ado, the first challenge is No Small Parts, which is Read an Actors Edition. I don't know if this counts, but I'm counting it, okay? Because there are no rules when it comes to readathons. I think the point is just to participate, right? So I'm going to read my personal uh, edit of Romeo and Juliet from our current uh, community theatre production. I am playing the Prince, I'm also in the dance ensemble, um, so that's exciting. Um, I've got some very iconic lines to deliver and I think I have like the last line of the whole play which is quite daunting, but yeah, so I'll be looking a lot at Romeo and Juliet, um, which also fits into one of the Shakespeare challenges, oh my god I'm getting ahead of myself, stop now. I will be delving into Romeo and Juliet in depth throughout this challenge and for the next few months. So that's great. The next prompt is Fridged, which is read a play that passes the Bechdel test. So I got like a small problem with this challenge is that for things like the Bechdel test, I feel like you can only really assess that properly once you've read the play. So it might not fit afterwards. So unless you know that somebody's recommended it and I haven't used any of the recommendations on the Google Doc, even though they all sound great. So I'm pretty sure that a streetcar named Desire fits the Bechdel test because there's lots of female named characters in it and I think they talk to each other about other issues than just men. Um, but I will only really know when I read it, so await my review. So the next one is Stage Manager's Dream. This is read a play that takes place in one location. So um, as part of theatre -thon, you are also allowed to include plays that you're going to see and um, next week, me and my boyfriend are going to London to see Grief is the Thing with Feathers, um, which we've both read um, by Max Porter and adore. As my memory serves, Grief is the Thing with Feathers happens entirely in the flat of the family. So provided that they've interpreted it in the same way, I think that will all take place in one location. I'm really, really excited to see that because it's gonna be so good and, oh, drama. The next one is Art Imitates Life. So this is read a play by a person of color. Um, I am choosing to reread Something Dark by Lem Sisse because this is incredible. Um, I absolutely adore it. And I went to see him do a reading of this. So it's a, one man play um, that's kind of autobiographical and originally it was performed as a one man play by Lem Sisse, Um and it's now been put um, at, onto I think an optional on one of the school curriculums um, it's that good so um, it's published by Over on Modern Plays and it's kind of all in one big long monologue but it's it's written in a kind of um, spoken word poetry kind of feel because Lem Sisse is obviously a poet and it's about his um, life growing up in is it Rochdale and Wigan? I think it's he, he grew up in originally maybe in Wigan and then moved to Rochdale in Manchester and it's about growing up as one of the only black children in his school as an adopted child there's all these themes around family and belonging that he explores in such a moving way and I didn't even see him perform it as a play I saw him do like a reading where he would occasionally um, stop reading and just explain a little bit about it and even that just floored me I cried it was 
oh awful but brilliant um, and he deals with there is a small trigger warning if you wanted to read this um, for rape the themes are covered um, I don't think it's too graphic from what my memory serves because I read this directly after seeing it because I was like instantly I need to like I just need to consume this again because it's that good so the next one is lift every voice read a play that focuses on a character with a disability so for this one I was going to have a reread of The Glass Menagerie by Tennessee Williams so I know it's the second Tennessee Williams play that I've mentioned but I heart Tennessee Williams. I wish I could see it performed because um, I feel like it's just got this really, um, and, and the name The Glass Menagerie really like sets the tone of what feels like a very fragile um, and tense atmosphere throughout the play. The next prompt is, and the Tony goes to, read a play that won the Tony or Pulitzer Prize. I don't have anything like that. I haven't decided what I might explore for that one. Um, but that might be one that I only move on to if I have time because I'm already looking at this pile and going eek. And the last uh, prompt is Exit Pursued by a Bear, which is Read to Shakespeare. Obviously, I've already covered a Shakespeare, um, Romeo and Juliet, but that's predictable. So I think I am going to try and read Othello um, because I saw it performed... Um, not too long ago in the Liverpool Everyman and I really enjoyed it. It was performed with a female lead as I thought oh, um what's her name? Golda Rushevel. She was brilliant, loved her. I wasn't too keen on some of the other elements um that they did with it, but I thought overall it was really enjoyable. It was a strong adaptation. To me it seems even more plausible um in 2019 that Fem a female leader um, and especially like a, a female military leader would be undermined um, in the ways that Othello is undermined and then you've got like the extra intersectional layers of especially um, women of colour would, would suffer from those tropes and stereotypes so I just think that it's before it's time. I also have a wild card um, which is uh, Samuel Beckett's Collected Shorter Plays uh, I haven't read any of these, so I don't know which challenges they would fit into, if any, um, but my boyfriend lent me this quite a long time ago, and I've never got around to reading any of them. Um, he's Irish, Samuel Beckett's Irish. So I thought that I could use this challenge to try and read this, or read some of these, um, and I shall feed back when I review them to let you know if they did fit with any of the challenges or not. Um, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what everyone else reads and getting some more recommendations and finding some more uh, booktubers who have theatre as an interest or theatre YouTubers who have books as an interest. There's a lovely crossover here. I am one of such, full disclosure, when me and my boyfriend first met, one of the ways that we used to um, find extra ways to talk to each other was to recommend books to each other and then quickly go away and read them and then come back and then we'd have something to, new to talk about um so yeah um and the reason that I never got around to the Samuel Beckett is because I had well I think we got together shortly after he lent me this so that's part of the reason I never got around to it is um I didn't didn't need the motivation to uh, to have some new conversation topics um, because we was already a thing. So there's that. Um, also, incidentally, I don't know if anyone cares about this, but I'm on a I'm on a roll now. Look, we're just we're communicating, sharing vibes. Um, so yeah. Also, incidentally, um, two of the things that we exchanged during that time were. A Clockwork Orange, he gave that to me and I gave him Grief is a Thing with Feathers and after next week we shall both have seen both plays together. Um, we saw A Clockwork Orange in Liverpool Everyman as well which um, did polarise the views of our friends. Um, some people really did not get it but then they also didn't really know what they were getting themselves into because they'd never seen the movie or read the book so we probably should have primed them a bit more um, but yeah, um, we saw that before we were together and we're seeing Grief is the Thing with Feathers next week in London, so that's exciting. 
and it's just one of those other bookish theatre crossovers and I just thought that was relevant to the audience of this video. So yeah, um, yeah, so if you, if you like theatre based content or book based content, you can subscribe to my channel because this is two of the main things that I pedal. Um, I'm not the most regular, but I try. Yeah, too loose.